right. All right. Thank you. What an intro. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, my name is Victor Balta. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Communications and Spokesperson for the University of Washington. Appreciate you all showing up here for this very momentous special occasion, introducing our 16th Athletic Director for the University. So I'm going to hand it over to President Kausay in just a moment. We're, we're going to have opening remarks from both participants, and then we're going to do about uh, uh, 20 minutes of Q&A. And then for the media, there'll be about 10 minutes of uh, scrum time uh, after word off, off to the side. So appreciate you all being here. And with that, President Kelsey. Well, thank you, Victor. And thank you all for coming out. We have a heck of a big week coming up. And this is a great way to start. Um, and it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Troy Dannon as the University of Washington 16th Director of Athletics. Let's hear it for Troy. Now, Troy was most recently at Tulane University, where he really led a transformation of the athletics program there. During his eight years as AD, the Green Wave had 49 All-Americans and 21 conference championships, and they made 41 postseason appearances. That includes a Cotton Bowl victory over USC earlier this year that resulted in Tulane finish finishing ranked number ninth in the nation. And I know that all of us were rooting against Tulane. <laughs> but it's just absolutely fabulous, um, you know, what he's done uh, for the programs, and not just for football, but for all the programs across all sports during the 2022-2023 academic year. There were 40 Tulane student athletes who were named to all conference teams. And Tulane student athletes also set a department record academic progress rate of 992 this past year. They had a 93% graduation success rate. Let's hear it. And it's really in recognition of this transformative work that Troy was a finalist for the Sports Business Journal's Athletic Director of the Year Award in 2022. Um, he's also, and this was, you know, really important to us as we're making, you know, this very big transition. Troy has been a leader in national discussions about the changing landscape of college athletics, and that will be invaluable to us as we move to the Big Ten next year and as we secure the long-term success of our Husky teams. This is about today, this is about tomorrow, and this is really about the long run. From 20 to 23, he served first on the NCAA Constitution Committee and then on the NCAA Transformation Committee, serving alongside presidents, commissioners, and director of athletics in charting a path forward for intercollegiate athletics. He's currently in his fourth year as chair of the NCAA Football Competition Committee and serves on the executive committee of the NCAA Football Oversight Committee. So he has a lot of knowledge and a lot of contacts that he brings to us as we move forward. Troy also oversaw the establishment of Tulane's name, image, and likeness program to support student athletes, as well as the launch of their inclusion initiative, which they called the Green Wave Justice for All. And he's been involved in many, many successful fundraising efforts. Most importantly, Troy is dedicated to the mission and values of the UW. This is about fit, and his values are very much our values and vice versa. And what I mean by that is excellence in all of our 22 sports and excellence not only on the field, but in the classroom. He also is a very strong proponent of support for our 650 student athletes' health and well-being. He really looks at the whole student athlete. And he's also very committed to preparing for them for long-term success in their lives and in their careers. And that is so important for all of us in this room and its values that we very much shape. I received a lot of ideas and advice during the search, and I want to thank a couple of people in particular, our former coach, Chris Peterson, who was an advisor throughout this process. It is so wonderful to have him still so involved with our athletic program. Also to our Regents Alexis Harris, who is here, and David Zeke, um, who were very, very helpful throughout. 
And I also want to give a very special shout out to Erin O'Connell. Um, Erin, come on. She has been nothing but short of amazing in terms of providing guidance and help to me, to our entire athletic department. She has stepped in. She hasn't stepped in. She has dived in um, and has really, really helped to keep us not only together, but moving forward. Another big round of applause to Aaron. I just want to end by saying that Troy is committed to excellence across all our sports, as well as to the success of our students off the field. There is no question about that. I'm thrilled to welcome him and Amy, along with Elle, Emily, Holly, and William to our Husky family. Thank you. And they're already wearing purple, and they look great in it. All right. So welcome, Troy. Thank you, uh, President Kalse. Uh, first, I think I'm underneath of a pretty significant uh, piece of history here, which is, is remarkable. It's a remarkable place to be. Uh, I don't know how everybody's day is going, but mine's going pretty well so far. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to death to be here. Uh, I want to thank everyone that, that came. Uh, I, look, I look forward to meeting and talking to as many of you as I possibly can. I want to start by, by thanking President Kalse and, and uh, uh, Regent Chair uh, Zeke and, and, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Alexis, uh, which is what I'm going to call you for, from now on, uh, for, for all the work on this, uh, that you did on the search committee and, and really for giving me and my family a, an opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, this is a, it's a great institution. It's a storied athletic program. And uh, you, know, you, you work your whole life in, in, in this business, and you hope for an opportunity like this to come. And I, I really want to thank you for, for offering it. And I want, to, I want to pile on a little bit on Aaron. Uh, you know, being an interim AD is the hardest job that there is. Uh, and, and I know how successful she handled it for the last six weeks. But I don't know if people realize uh, she's had a much harder job the last three days. She's been my Sherpa, uh, trying to, to get me integrated, get our family integrated, and, and, and get me familiarized as much as possible. And she's just, she's a superstar. And I really appreciate uh, everything she's done up to this point. So thanks, Aaron. I uh, look forward to working with you and, and everyone. Uh, I want to thank Jen. You know, Jen's a great friend, and I, I respect her tremendously. And, and Jen did something that most athletic leaders don't do, is when she, she left behind a high-functioning department with great people in a, in a superior culture. And I'm blessed that I'm able to walk in uh, with that from the start. Such a great foundation here, and such great people that I've been able to meet over the last few days. And, and I do want to thank Jen. And I also want to thank Mike Fitz, the president at Tulane. Uh, you know, he was my only president there. and, and you know, presidents take a chance when they hire athletic directors. And, and I, I, I told President Kalse, uh, trust me, I will not let you down. And, uh, but I want to thank President Fitz for giving me the opportunity, my family the opportunity. You know, we lived in Iowa our entire life and went to New Orleans, uh, which was uh, a bit of a culture shock. Now, I will tell you, this is much uh, more familiar to our culture because my wife has also lived in Iowa her whole life. And, and so uh, we're really looking forward to being here. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna thank, but I will introduce my family. Uh, I did this with staff a little bit ago and I'm gonna embarrass them again. Uh, I will start with Ellie. Uh, stand up, Ellie, and wave at everybody. So, Ellie is, uh, turn around. All right, so Ellie's 10, uh, budding volleyball superstar, uh, uh, budding soccer player. We did not have soccer at Tulane. She cannot wait to have soccer here. And, and as I said to the staff, and there's so many of the staff members over here, she is in charge. And, uh, uh, you know, when we got up here, obviously, you know, it, it's easy for me. I, I, I got the job offer this weekend, and here I am Monday to work. You know, they're, they're getting displaced, and, and uh, you know, everybody was nervous and came up here, and, and uh, there was a husky, a stuffed husky in the, in the room. And it's like the switch turned on. And uh, she's awesome. And then William, stand up, William, buddy. He's, uh, now, I'm going to call him Buddy all the time, but his real name is William. <laughs> He's nine. He's uh, uh, Kalen hasn't met him yet, but he will, he will be playing wide receiver for us at, at some point in time. Uh, he's also, uh, I haven't introduced him to Hop yet, but he is a, a lockdown defender on the wing. And so uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm anxious for him to get integrated into the department, and, and we're anxious. There's so many kids in the athletic department. I, I've said this before. I got two things going. I got my family and my job, and those are the only two things I care about. And uh, I got a great family. Um, Sit down. <laughs> 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 and 
And then my, my wife's my rock star. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, Amy. So, um, you know, uh, you look at those kids, and I talked about them being athletes. Genetically, they get neither one of those characteristics, their look or their athleticism from me. They get it from her, and I'm very, very fortunate. And, uh, you know, when you move, it's a family decision. And, uh, you know, this, this is an incredible opportunity, but we wouldn't have gotten involved in it from day one unless the family was excited to be here. And so we were excited to be here. I think the last two days, I'm not sure they want to go back to New Orleans, but they're going to have to go back for a while and finish some school and transition up here. But I want to thank my family, and, and uh, they're just and they they're awesome. they look great in purple. They do look great in purple. So it is nice to start during a nice slow time of year where you can just ease into it and not worry about anything else happening. Uh, uh, a couple of things, you know, there's going to be a listen and learn tour for me, and, and I'm really looking forward to that. And, and it's as much about the why as it is the what, and understanding, you know, why we are who we are and, and how we've gotten to where we are. And, and that's going to really inform me, uh, and that's a luxury to get to do. But there are some things that aren't a luxury uh, that we have to do really quickly. Uh, one of them is uh, going to happen this weekend where I think this weekend's a whole celebration of the institution, what game day's doing coming in here, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, I do want you to know what, I, what my goals and objectives are coming in. One, I want to win in everything. And, you know, everybody looks at, everybody in here has a different idea of what winning means. I know Alexis, I know what winning means to her. It's that grade point's going to tick up a notch. The graduation rate's going to tick up a notch next year. And, and, and I, know, uh, I know what the president thinks winning is partly is, is uh, let's get that budget balanced, right, and, and do a good job of financial. But I want to win financially, and I want to win academically, and I want to win socially. I, I want the department to represent everyone, alums, donors, fans, friends, this community in the best possible way. And you do that by winning socially, by representing everyone well. But by golly, we're going to win competitively. We're going to win in everything that we do. And there aren't many schools institutions in the country where you can say that with a straight face, that it's a priority win in everything, and this is one of them. And that's what made this so attractive to me. And I think the other thing about winning is you will find us, we will do it with integrity, and we'll do it with class. And uh, that's, that's the one thing. You know, we don't control a lot. We think we control everything, but we don't control it. We do control our integrity. We do control the class in which we rep represent the institution. We will do that. Uh, I have a goal. I, I, I want us to set a standard by which everyone else will aspire to achieve. I told our staff a little bit ago, uh, I want to be the chaste, not the chaser. And, and you know, everybody does that differently. It's from, the, from the ticket office to the custodian to the compliance office to, to the fundraiser, to every aspect of the department. I want to be the standard bearer for what excellence is. And that can happen, and it can happen quickly because the people are here. It's such great people in an institution that cares and is committed to all of that. So uh, great opportunities. Uh, the staff has a big challenge. I just talked to them a little bit ago. You know, we, we're, we're out to win Pac-12 championships. We've got a big year ahead of us. Uh, this program has a chance. I, I want to be the best program in the Pac-12. At the same time, over here on this rail, we're preparing for a transition that the likes of which very few of any schools have, have experienced in the move to the Big Ten. It's a huge opportunity. I don't want to lose sight of what we're doing right now. I, we're not going to look ahead. You know, coaches don't look ahead beyond the next game, right? We're not looking ahead beyond the next game. We're going we're gonna to dominate in, in the space that we're in, and then we're going to move into the next space, and we're going to dominate that space. And that's the plan. Uh, now, all this said, uh, the North Star in this department are the student athletes. And the way we win, the way we put people in a position to win, is by making sure their experience is as good as anybody's in the world. And the things that people don't see, from the behavioral health program to the academic support to sports medicine to the strength and conditioning to the nutrition, the things that people don't see that really define the experience of, of the kids in the program, we're going to be really, really good at it. And our North Star is always going to shine in everything that we do. And when the North Star is shining, everything else can happen. Everything else can happen. And we will never forget that. And we will never forget the purpose and the objective. You know, this is a. Uh, Today's intercollegiate athletics, there's this holistic piece and there's the fiduciary piece. And the people that win balance those two things. And that's the ultimate challenge. And I think at Tulane we had things really well balanced. And I think at UW 
we have things really well balanced, but the key to our future is making sure we have those two things really, really well balanced. Uh, last couple of things I would say. Starting this weekend, you know, there's, uh, you, can, you can cheer for success, uh, you can hope for success, and that's important, but uh, we need everybody to affect success. And it starts in that stadium this weekend, and, and you know, that is the greatest home field advantage. One, the geography, but two, I, I've never been in the stadium for a game. I already know it's home field advantage because I've watched enough games in there over the years on TV. Uh, if, if a UW game is on TV, I watched it because I wanted the experience that I got through the TV. Game day being here, everything else. Affect the success. And that may mean you're cheering, you're loud, and you're into the game as a fan. But you know what else it's going to mean? It's going to mean somebody's going to be involved in the NIL program. It's going to mean somebody's going to help support the annual fund. It means somebody's going to have to step up when we do continued capital improvements. Uh, there are a lot of ways a lot of different people will affect success. And the challenge and the message to everybody is, uh, I want you to affect success. Because in this transition that we're making, uh, and, and the one thing that we can never afford to do is fall to our knees. Because it's going to be really hard to get back up. We're walking tall, we're standing proud. And I want to make sure that continues going forward. Uh, I guess the last thing I'd say, uh, we can't be more excited. My family, I can't be any more excited to be here. Uh, and be a part of your program, your department, your university, and your city. But I will tell you this, we've been here two whole days now. Actually, we've been here about 26 and a half hours. Uh, it's home. It's already home. It's our university. It's our program. It's our city. It's our community. And we're all in and thrilled to be here. And President Kyle, say thank you again for the opportunity. And, and go dogs. All right. Just to make sure that you're all ready. Officially a dog. Officially a dog. All right. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll give you a microphone. Uh, please state your name and what uh, outlet you're with. Hi, Troy. Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Um, why? why? Were you looking for an opportunity to move on from Tulane? And what was it that you heard along the way that made this the opportunity you wanted to pursue? Actually, I wasn't looking to move away from Tulane. You know, we kind of built something from scratch there. And, and you know it was it it, it it was kind of what you do your your whole career you hope to build something like that now i'm i'm um, i'm not a great maintainer i want to continue to do things uh, but when when this particular job opened i mean this has this has everything you know first it starts with where you want to live i'm at the point in my career i i wasn't going to leave if it wasn't a place that the family wanted to live uh, i i'm not going to move again you know God willing, President willing. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, so where is it that we want to be? But I said this earlier, I want to win in everything, and I don't want to go someplace where you can't win in everything. And winning is really important. There's a, ask everybody over here, the hours that you put in, the time you put in, the heartache that you get, the emotions of, of what the, the athletes go through, if you aren't in it to win it, get out. And this is a place where you, you win it. So you put those two things together, it was a no-brainer. And then I went through six weeks of nerves as whether I could actually get the job or not. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I relied on Jen. I, I, I asked a lot of people. I probably did as much diligence on Washington as Washington did on me because I wanted to make sure, you know, the other piece to this, I want to make sure I'm the right fit here for the people that are here. Uh, I, there, there's too good of a thing built and it deserves somebody that fits in with the culture and deserves somebody that cares about the place. And I know what I am, and I wanted to make sure that what I am is what we are. And I felt really, really comfortable with that. So that's when the nerves really started kicking and said, oh boy, I, I need to get this job because this is a great one. Yeah, if I could just add, we had fabulous, fabulous candidates, and we had a lot of wonderful people who came to us. 
but we also were very active in recruiting, and we were reaching out to people who weren't looking at advertisements and who weren't necessarily looking to move. Um, and so it really was very active on our part as well. So we, we just weren't going to wait to see who came to us. We were out there. Uh, Larry Stone, Seattle Times. Um, you talked about wanting to prioritize all the programs at UW. How do you balance that with the obvious need for football to sort of uh, be, be the king and you, you have to have a good football program? Well, football is the economic animal and the economic engine of every department. And, and I think we all understand that, the work in athletics, and, and you have to feed that engine because if you don't feed that engine and it dies, uh, you know, it, it, it takes a lot away from every other program. That said, the experience that the 650 student athletes have here should be the same. It doesn't matter if you're the starting quarterback or, or you're the, the golfer that maybe whose score doesn't count in most matches. If that experience needs to be the same. Uh, we're preparing our student athletes to be successful for the rest of their lives. And when they walk out of here, they need to look back and say, my time at Washington was impactful. And I'm better off in my life because of my time at Washington. And so in, there's, go back to this holistic versus the fiduciary. You got to keep those things in balance. And don't mess with the holistic. It is a priority. And athletic departments implode and ADs get fired. And coaches don't stick, stick around. And employees don't stay in departments that don't take care of the holistic first understanding that we've got the animal over here that we need to feed. And the fact that football is in such a great position here, if I'm not mistaken, you might even been ranked one spot ahead of Tulane last year at the end of the, end of the season, eighth versus ninth. But the fact that two, uh, football is in such a great position here, uh, you know, really helps uh, with that balance that we have to have. And, and, you know, my job, our job, is to keep these coaches in a position where they can win. And, and uh, uh, taking care of the holistic first is the way to do it. Yeah, hey, uh, Troy, nice to meet you. Um, how would you describe your leadership style and what is your strength? Uh, I will have a staff, and I think they're already over there, that's better at what they do than I would ever think about being able to be. Uh, my job is to get everybody marching in the same direction. They will find very quickly that if I mess around in the weeds with them, it's bad news for both of us because I'm not nearly as smart as they are. And, and uh, I, I'm, I'm every bit of not a micromanager. My goal is, is to get everybody uh, dancing to the same verse and, and setting a target and setting a goal and just being re persistent in chasing it. And I love to set a flag out there and say, we're getting to that flag, now let's develop a plan to find to, to get to that flag. Uh, I don't know, did I end, was there a second part of the question? I got my strength. Oh, uh, 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 you know what, I'm, I'm extremely open. I didn't grow up in the business. You know, if you look at my resume, I spent the first 16 years of my life working for and eventually running a high school athletic association. I don't come in with a lot of predispositions. Uh, I, uh, I'm very open-minded. I consider myself to be very empowering of the staff. I think, uh, I think if you want to strength, I would tell you, I have pretty good emotional intelligence. I, I think I know when to get involved and I know what fights to fight. Troy, uh, Dave Mahler with KJR Radio. Um, one thing we did not ask you yesterday, the Apple Cup. Let's get right to it. You want to see the Apple Cup continue? Uh, Washington State has their opinion on the matter, but do you want to see that game continue past this year? So I'll start with a little bit of a, I've been here 26 hours, and I did this on a radio show. I was at 120 minutes when we started the radio show. I think it was at 136 when we ended the radio show yesterday. But, but um, I've got a lot to learn. Uh, I will say this, you know, what's happened in college athletics, a lot of the history, rivalries, things that are traditions have been destroyed through the evolution of college athletics. And we're gonna to continue to evolve. Uh, I, my bias is I don't wanna lose the history and the traditions. I also know that, that I have this economic model, particularly as we move to the Big Ten, uh, where we're playing with people that, that 
frankly have an economic, economic model that is, is I don't want to say far superior, but far greater than ours. We have to be really careful. And seven home games is a, uh, is a piece of the economic model going forward that, that, uh, that UW has to have. Now, does that mean it has to, I, I don't know. But, but long term, we have to have seven home games and the revenue generated by seven home football games uh, in order to be in a financial position to compete in the league that we're moving into. I can just add that we are having some conversations, and, 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 and Troy isn't 100% um, up to speed on them because he's been here for 26 hours. Nico Tamuri and Como News back here. Um, it's sort of similar to that. As you come here, it's obviously just a crazy dynamic with not just the change here at UW, but across college athletics. What is the challenge or maybe even excitement to embrace that here with this new job? So there are a lot of schools and a lot of places that are sitting on the railroad tracks looking back at history, yearning for the past, and they're going to get run over by the next train. What I know about UW is we're going to look around the corner. And there was a commitment, and that was one of the things I talked about with everybody that I talked to in the interview process. I wanted to make sure we're willing to look around the corner. And so the train doesn't catch us, but we're looking to make sure we stay ahead of the train. And there are a lot of changes happening. You know, we're a, and I mentioned this earlier, we're control freaks, right? We think we control everything. The next wave of changes, and if you think the last three to five years has, has been tumultuous, the next three to five are going to put it to shame. Uh, there, are, there are legal cases, uh, you know, a lot of things outside the control of those of us in, inside of athletic departments that, that will dictate to us a lot of our future rather than us getting to dictate our future. And so being prepared for whatever that is and trying to stay one step ahead of that so that, you know, we, we can come out of whatever happens running and not walking or not on our knees. And that's, that's the change or that's the challenge rather here. Troy, Mike Farrell, Seattle Times, uh, you've stated very clearly that you want to win competitively and that's a big deal here. And moving into the Big Ten, why do you feel like Washington is positioned to win consistently despite receiving a fraction of its competitors' revenue over the, pat over the next five seasons? Uh, first, if you look at somebody's budget, that doesn't necessarily dictate your ability to win or not to win. The most important resource we have is people and having the right people in place. Uh, and sometimes, and I said this yesterday, when you're inside the bubble, it, it's hard to understand how you're looked at outside the bubble, from outside the bubble. I've been outside this bubble. Uh, this place is the envy of, of many, many institutions for a few reasons. One, it's, uh, it's one of the top 15 public institutions in the country. It's got one, one, if not the best hospital system in the country. And that's important. It's important in athletics. Uh, because athletics follows the reputation of the institution. Uh, the budget we have, you know, I, I'm, I'm coming from a place where the budget was about one-fifth of this. You know, I walk in and say, I can't believe what we have. And I'm not judging it against anybody else. I'm judging it against what do we need, what do we have. I'm used to, I, didn't, I don't have the money to make mistakes at the schools I've been at, so you don't make them. And I don't have my, the money to buy your way out of things if you do make this. So you don't get in those positions. Uh, this, is an, this is an institution that's operated in much that same way. Uh, the people are in place. Uh, now, do we need to grow revenues? Absolutely. I mean, that's the name of the game and that's the future. But if you look at most of the revenues at the institutions, they're, they're coming from outside sources, right? Multimedia rights, television contracts. And I understand that we have a little bit of a lag coming with Big Ten, but I will tell you this. Uh, the alternative uh, would be much, much worse. I think the, the move to the Big Ten gives us hope for stability and vitality. Uh, and, and while that, that full per diem, if you will, from the Big Ten may be a little ways out, uh, the future is bright. Uh, uh, we, uh, we beat USC last year with a whole lot, much, uh, much smaller budget that, because we, had, we got the work ethic, we got the people, we care. You know, you do all the intangible things right. And, and uh, 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 the top 25 poll is not based on the top 25 budgets. It's based on how much you do right. Yeah, if I might add, because I, I get asked this question a lot, that there's this sense of that somehow if we weren't in the Big Ten, we wouldn't be competing against the Big Ten. To be at the top, we were going to be competing against the Big Ten, whether we were in or out, and we weren't 
it wasn't like we had the option to have the budget of the Big Ten. But, uh, you know, as, as we have seen this season, the Pac-12 is on fire, and they're being paid less than the Big Ten. So, you know, again, there's this sense of somehow that if we weren't in the Big Ten, we wouldn't be competing against them. To be at the very top, to be competitive, we're going to have to find ways of beating Michigan and Ohio State, regardless of what conference we were in. And that goes back to the effect success. You know, the, the financial piece, we will call on everybody to affect success. And, and, and you, we have to generate revenues in ways that we have in the past, but either on a, on a different level or find ways that we haven't generated in the past. I mean, it's, it is a key to keeping that balance that we talked about earlier. And the balance is what gives you the chance to win championships. You know, one of the things that I'll add, because our entire university competes at the highest level without budgets at the highest level. Look at our academic budgets, compare them to um, some of the top universities that we compete at. Um, one of the things about not necessarily having the, having the highest budget, and believe me, we want to grow the budget. I want to be 100% clear about that. But is we can't, we can't solve problems by throwing money at them. And that really makes us need to be strategic, to be focused, to really think. And sometimes that can be an incredible advantage. Troy, Chris Fetters with uh, dogman.com, 24-7 Sports, CBS. You talked about your relationship with Jen Cohen, and you talked about how she left the place in, in such a, a good state. I was just curious about the talks that you had with her. You talked about you doing, doing your due diligence as much as you dubbed it on you. What were those conversations like? What kind of insight did you get from her? And were there any other people in that circle that, that you may have spoken about that, that talked about you, Dub? You know, my conversations with her more in terms of, you know, here's what I am as a person. Here's how I like to operate. Here's how I believe in working with staff. Does that work? I'm not an autocrat. Uh, I, I'm not going to come in and boss people around. I, I want, I'm kind of in the weeds with everybody. I wanted to know if that played here. Uh, again, it, you know, there's a lot of factors you, you look at when you decide on whether you want a job or not. And, and one of them is, it's, I have to be a fit. Because the last thing, oh, I don't want to go a place I'll fail because that type of leadership doesn't work. And so that was mo more of the context. And then, you know, I, a lot of my, you know, I, I think I know probably every athletic director in the country. And, and uh, some of them are very, very close friends that could keep their mouth shut, so I talked to them and, and asked them what they thought. Several in the Pac-12. Uh, tell me what you think of the university. Tell me, is, can they win? Tell me what the reputation is. Tell me what the pe I wanted to know what, what they thought. And well, you know, I won't give you names because their own schools will be mad at them, but they raved about the place. And uh, I go back, uh, one, of our, one of our really good friends is uh, uh, Mickey Loomis. Mickey used to be here with the Seahawks uh, and, and is now the general manager of the Saints and obviously lived here for a while. And he just raved and raved and raved about Seattle. And that's the thing that's hit me more than anything. How many people rave about the place and, like, and tell us that we're perfect fits for where we're gonna live and how much that no me and no Amy Say, you're going to love living there. And so th those are the things we found. You know, I didn't, I didn't get into talking about budgets with anybody or, or things like that. I, it's about culture for me, and finding out the culture, make sure we were both fits for one another. Hi, I'm Dan Rayleigh. I run the Sports Illustrated website. Um, a, a number of years ago, I had a chance to go to Tulane and, and visit the campus and the coaching staff before they played Washington in a bowl game. And uh, got a look at it, and it, it was uh, an interesting place. But last year when I saw your team hit the Cotton Bowl and beat USC, I was totally blown away by that. I just thought, what a leap. And, and, and I just wondered what was behind your thinking and what was the key element uh, with your, your football coaching staff to just make that tremendous leap and have all of that success in a, in a real, um, you know, something really unusual. So... We hired really, really, really good people that fit the culture. You know, I, the transfer portal to me is, is how we should uh, look at culture today. 
And we didn't lose kids. We haven't lost kids at all to the transfer portal. And we've gotten a lot of kids that came back to New Orleans through the So the culture inside the program is good. And you know, that, that you know, sometimes we all do surveys of student athletes to know what they think, but when they choose to stay, when they don't have to stay, is, is in today's world, I think it's a good insight into the culture. We have a really good coach, and much like Kalen, and, and I've talked to Kalen enough, Kalen is, is Willie Fritz, quality human being that cares about the kids and doesn't browbeat anybody and is positive, is enthusiastic, and, and has a way to bring everybody together, the synergy to get more out of them than anybody would get out of the individual parts. They think they can win. It doesn't matter. You, in the budget question earlier, we always know we can win. That'll be the case here. It doesn't matter who we play, how we play, or, or what somebody's got on the front of their jersey or in their bank account, we can win. Because we're gonna be better at everything that we can possibly be better at. And that's what happened at Tulane. Uh, now, the other thing that happened at Tulane, and this was, you know, talk about diligence. The institutional alignment has to be such that you can win. And then what I mean by institutional alignment, I'm not saying that everything has to get out of the way of athletics. It means that the president has to think the same way and has to believe the same things. And it means that the faculty representative has to believe the these things and has to support athletics. It means that Tulane, you know, I meet with the deans and the provosts. It means that we're all together in alignment and we all want, we all share this common goal. And again, that's the last part of the diligence for me here. The common goal is shared. And so anything can happen. Well, thank you for coming to today's press conference. For those in the media, if you'd like to stick around for a little bit, uh, we're going to meet in the Rose Auditorium, just, just back there. Thank you. Thank you so much.